And so you, you don't think this cameo is a bit forced. I, I don't know, I just kind of feel like I'm sticking out like a sore thumb here. <laughs> All right, well, I'll let you to it. Well, if you were expecting high art, you came to the wrong place. But that said, hello again, and I hope you're all doing well. Yes, these videos, as you can tell, they get pretty cringe as all heck, but again, it's just a hobby I do when time permits. Anyway, my new guide on motions to reconsider summarizes 16 cases plus extras, such as case law on raising new arguments because every lawyer gets calls from perspectives needing cleanup because, well, the trial went south. And if you like these roundups, I've got two, yes, two CLEs coming this fall. The flagship one is going to be the Cook County JL Seminar Series. But a few weeks after that, there's a condensed version for CVLS. If you attend either, you're going to get this mega, super crazy cheat sheet guy covering like a big pile of case law updates. So sign up if you can make it. And if you can't, no big deal. But let's get on with the roundup. I picked my top three from the guide. Your mileage may vary, but the first one, let's face it, it's only going to interest appellate nerds like myself and Paul. And Paul, I'm still not over what you did to the house last week. I don't get it. It just, it just gets worse from here, guys. Anyways, it's a pro se appeal. The guy files three. Yes, three motions to reconsider the denial of his $50 appellate fee waiver. Court denies it because he failed to argue why the new info couldn't be included in his initial fee petition. Now, this isn't a rehearing petition. This is just a, hey, will you reconsider this? And apparently, those are now fair game in the appellate court. So, who knew? Next case is this Aflac trivia one. The judge denies a plaintiff's commercial eviction because they failed to demonstrate service of the five-day notice. That's true, but only because the defendant's lawyer at the 619 hearing some weeks prior acknowledge service of the green card. So the plaintiff files a motion to reconsider and says, hey, counsel statement at that 619, that was a judicial admission. The trial judge says, hey, nobody asked me to take judicial notice of that at trial, denies the motion. On appeal, however, the appellate court holds it was a judicial admission. Yes, Virginia, they aren't limited to 216s in pleadings. They can also apply to factual assertions in support of a motion to dismiss and it was proper to bring that to the court's attention in a motion to reconsider. Now, I chose this final case because it is, it's such a teachable moment for all lawyers. Here, mom through counsel argues she lost custody of the kids because her urinalysis was tampered with, and she cites to this vast conspiracy. Now, what little evidence she had wasn't raised until after the custody trial in a motion to reconsider. And it mostly consisted of like parking tickets. And I, I, I don't have any idea how that proves really anything, but regardless, you can't raise new evidence in a motion to reconsider if you can't show why it wasn't available at the initial trial. There's that famous line from case law that trial is not a practice ground. And I include a small section of case law in the guide that summarizes what does and doesn't count as new evidence in a motion to reconsider. Anyways, mom loses the motion to reconsider. She appeals during it. Whew. Her lawyer sought extensions because he needed transcripts from the reconsideration hearing that it was vital to the case, but then doesn't argue it in the brief. Now, if you don't do appeals, the second district and the third has this rule that before you file any motion, you must first reach out to the other side and talk because the appellate court hates drama with the fire of a thousand sons. So Michael DiDiMecchio, he represents the appellee in this instance. He calls up the opposing counsel. Maybe he emailed. I, I really don't know what happened. But either way, he says, you know, look, this appeal shouldn't be here because one, you delayed the case to get a record you never used. Two, the record is missing like all sorts of stuff. It means really missing everything you need to win. And three, even if all this had been fixed, there's nothing indicating why mom's alleged conspiracy evidence wasn't available at the original trial. Why shouldn't I seek sanctions? Now, if that's the sit rep of your appeal and you're on the receiving end of that call, you gotta do the smart thing. You swallow your hate, you work something out. Now, I have no idea what happened. All I know is that the lawyer presumably tells Michael to go kick rocks because the sanction motion is eventually filed and it's granted. 
So with tears in my eyes, this is a teachable moment and a good time to plug Tim Storm's treatise on appeals because had this treatise been followed, maybe, just maybe, the sanctions motion could have been avoided. Anyways, that wraps up today's sneak peek. I held a straw poll on a social media page dedicated to domestic relations attorneys. I got about 50 responses, and through the use of managed democracy, I picked next month's topic. You may be surprised to find out one of those appeals, it's a published opinion, believe it or not, uh, features a case of mine. Now, whether I won or not, you'll have to wait to find. Actually, you can just go on the state page. Who am I kidding? Um, hold one second. Ah. As always, thanks for watching. Did that work? <laughs>